Shalom. I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rukah Kadash. I'm going to send forward double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone to rule well. Shalom wa Barakim, Lahabakarim, which means peace and blessings unto the, unto the elect. All right, Lord's will is edifying. And um, I'm just going to start at verse uh, Isaiah. This is Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 4. It says, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. All right, so the Lord is about to bring forth delusions, okay, upon the world, okay, because the whole world is about to feel the wrath of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, but specifically, all right, two thirds of the nation of Israel, you Israelites, consists of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay, and the time in which we're coming into is known as Jacob's trouble. All right, and delusions are gonna, are gonna befall you. Okay, meaning your worst nightmares, your greatest fears. Okay, great anxiety. All right, these things are gonna come to you because what it says when I spake, they did not hear. How does the Lord speak? He speaks through his men. When his men is out there prophesying, all right, doing lessons, doing uh, street preaching. All right, and doing uh, at home sit downs. Two thirds, they don't regard it. All right, the scriptures say, My people doth not know, my people doth not consider. So, because since you disregard the message and the word of the Lord, it says what? It says, He's going to bring those delusions upon you. Okay? And what else do our people do? It says, They do the things in which the Lord delight not, man. Like eat pork. All right, commit adultery. All right, get tattoos. Okay, so on and so forth. All right. But the Lord is going to bring these, these plagues, these judgments on our people. Let me get this real quick. This is Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse, sorry, verse 4. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Israel represents the northern kingdom tribe, which are you so-called Native American Indians, all right, Mexican Indians, okay, so on and so forth. All right, Judah represents the Southern Kingdom tribe, which is the so-called Negroes, Haitians, and Jamaicans. All right, it says, For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. So the Lord is about to bring forth great fear, all right, and great trembling, and not of peace. Okay, what's the opposite of peace? Evil. The word evil means bad times. All right, eve meaning a period of time, and ill meaning a horrible time. That's what the Lord is bringing. To the nation of Israel, all right, be, and two thirds because what they they don't want to repent and they don't want to get right with their God, all right. They want to continue within wickedness, all right. So what the Lord is going to have to destroy them. The scriptures say, uh, "Why should why should he be stricken anymore?" All right, verse six. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. All right. So the prophet Jeremiah was like, do men give birth? Okay. And the answer to that is no. All right. But when Jeremiah um, saw this vision of Jacob's trouble, all right, he saw men, all right, um, with their hands on their, on their, bent over, all right, and, and screaming as if they're, they're giving birth to a child, man. All right. Verse seven, it says, alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right. So Jacob's trouble essentially is what is coming, man. All right, a time of trouble that has not been seen on the planet Earth. OK, and it's going to be directly geared towards the nation of Israel. OK, chiefly two thirds, man. All right. Because it's going to be your uh, destruction. It's going to be your end. All right. And the, and the reason why it's coming is because of disobedience, man. So let's go ahead and get Second Ezra. This is Second Ezra chapter eight and verse verse fifty. It says, "For many great miseries shall be done to them 
that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. All right. The scriptures also say in Sirach 10 that um, a man. OK, pride is the beginning of a man departing from his maker. OK, the Lord, he resists the proud. He hates pride. OK, but in, uh, the people of this world, two thirds, they're in that continual spirit of pride. So the Lord said, because of that, he's going to bring forth great miseries. OK, and if you go into the etymology of the word miseries, you get the, the proper definition. It's going to say an external um, showing an external condition of unhappiness. All right. So people are going to be cracking fake smiles and laughing. All right. Everyone's going to show on their face that they're catching hell. All right. Because this is the great day of the Lord. This is the wrath that the Lord is bringing unto the, unto the world, man. All right. This is the book of Amos chapter uh, chapter 5 and verse, let's just start at verse 18. It says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. All right, so the day of the Lord is is, is a day of, of darkness, man. It's not going to be um, the Lord coming back and, and just hugging everybody and accepting everybody and just saying, even though you broke all my laws, I'm going to receive you in paradise. Nah. All right, that's a that's a fairy tale. That's a lie. All right, that's been propagated. Okay, the day of the Lord is going to be a day of great death. The Lord said, "What the slain of the Lord shall be many." The Lord said, "Think not that I am come to send peace on earth, but a sword." Said the Lord said, "Nay, rather division." Okay, the Lord said that mothers are going to be killing their daughters. Daughters are going to be killing their mothers. All right, fathers and sons are going to be killing each other. Brothers are going to be killing brothers, and the love of many. Because the love, of, because of iniquity abounds, the love of many shall wax cold. This is the type of day that we're um, fastly approaching, man. All right. Verse 19, it says, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. All right. So here it is. You just escaped a, a lion. OK, which is a, a, a death, a, a life and death situation. All right. You escaped the death. OK. And then, bam, a, a bear meets you. All right. Another life or death situation. And then, boom, you escaped that. It says, or went into the house. You escaped that. Two life or death situations. All right. You think it's it's time to relax. It says, and leaned his hand on the wall. And a serpent bit him. And then a, a big python, all right, uh, suffocates you. It wraps itself around you and eats you whole. And then poisonous you at the same time. Man. All right. That's what the day of the Lord is likened unto. That's the analogy. Okay. Because it's a great, horrible, and evil day, man. Verse 20 says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. So this is not going to be some happy, fun time. OK. Uh, this is Second uh, Ezra chapter nine. And uh, it's going to start at verse nine. OK, because uh, we started at Isaiah 66 talking about the, the um, delusions. OK, delusions are going to come upon this people. These people are going to be tormented, all right, because they're rebellion. All right, so this is Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. All right, so you're going to be, you're going to be bugging out, man. All right, you're not going to know what the hell is going on. You're going to be seeing things you didn't know existed. All right, you're going to be witnessing animals eat your loved ones. It's... Anything you can imagine, the things that you see in movies, okay, it's going to be that on steroids. All right, and the scriptures say what? You're going to be in a pitiful case that abuses ways because everybody in the society, two-thirds of our people, the, what they like to do is just transgress the laws of the Heavenly Father, man. So just like in the time of Noah, the Lord said, Noah, the end of all flesh is, is, is at hand. The Lord is saying the same thing now until, until the men of the Lord, the sincere believers. Look, the Lord is about to wipe Everybody off, the sinners off the face of the earth, man. All right, verse 10. It says, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. All right, these people, they got, you know, all types of benefits, man. Okay, yet they don't know the Lord, man. Verse 11. It says, and they that have loathed my law, while they have yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, 
understood not, but despise it. Here it is, they loathe the law. And the, the ultimate law right now is the law of faith in Yahweh Shai. Okay, they hate it, man. All right, this place is where our Lord is spiritually crucified. And here it is, they have liberty to repent. But what? They despise it, meaning they hate it. They don't take this opportunity to repent. They take this opportunity to continue uh, in their wickedness. All right, so here's the judgment. Verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. So they're going to have to die. Or, and it's not just a, a light death like you fall asleep. No, it's going to be um, a painful death. Like it says in Micah 2, all right, a sore destruction. It doesn't say that you're going to be destroyed. It says you're going to experience a sore destruction, meaning it's going to be terrible, man. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's get this. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. All right, so I'm bringing out the scripture because we're about to read the, the accounts in Egypt, how the Lord dealt, okay, with the Egyptians, okay, and now two-thirds of our people are likened unto modern-day Egyptians. They're heathens, man. Okay, but the scriptures say no more is the Lord going to talk about, all right, is the people going to talk about how the Lord destroyed Egypt. All right, but what? Verse 15, but the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where they have driven them. So the land of the north represents Babylon the Great, okay, which is America, North America, okay, we're going to be talking about the great deliverance that the Lord did all right, in, over here in Babylon. It says, and I'll bring them again into that land that I gave them to their fathers. And the Lord's going to bring the, the remnant that escaped, the elect, okay, uh, into salvation. Okay, but as the Lord destroyed ancient Egypt, okay, the Lord's going to destroy uh, modern day Egypt in a similar manner. All right, let's get that real quick. Second Edges 15, verse 11. It says, but I'll bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. So just as the Lord destroyed Egypt as before, he's going to do it again in this modern Egypt. And this whole land is going to be desolate. All right. This whole land is going to be a, a complete uh, wasteland. And it's going to be desolate. So let's go ahead and get this. All right, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17. We'll just rerun and then jump down to verse 3. It says, verse 1, it says, For great are thy judgments and cannot be expressed. Therefore, unnurtured souls have erred. All right, the Lord's judgments are great, man. And that's what everyone's going to be saying. That's what everyone's going to be declaring after the Lord's done uh, tormenting this, this world, man, and the wicked. Verse 3, it says, For while they supposed to lie hid their secret sins, it's talking about, the wicked it says they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness being horribly astonished and troubled with strange apparitions so our right, two-thirds of our people about to experience strange apparitions man all right they're going to be hearing and seeing demons man verse 4 it says for neither might nor neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear so the lord's going to put a terrible spirit of fear upon them man they're going to be in a corner in the dark shaking and shivering it says but noises as of waters falling down sounded about them and sad visions appeared unto them with heavy countenances all right so the lord is really going to be sending visions on our people man it says no power of the fire might give them light neither could the bright flames of the stars endure to lighten that horrible night all right so it's going to be such a dark time that you can't even use a lighter or a match to give you light, man. All right. All right. It says, Only there appeared unto them a fire kindled of itself, very dreadful for being much terrified. They thought the things which they saw to be worse than the sight they saw not. As for the illusions of art magic, they were put down in their vaunting, and wisdom was reproved with disgrace. All right. But, you know, that's pretty much the point, man. The Lord is going to Send forth those delusions, all right, upon two thirds of our people, all right, because they're rebellious. All right, those will just edify and call Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone of Ruel.
Shalom, Barakim, Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.